Hey guys, Dr. Brad Bodle here. And if you've been doing your research, you might know what it means if your TSH is high, but what if your TSH is low? If you're having low thyroid symptoms, that could be confusing and your doctor might be confused as well. That's why in this video, we're gonna talk about the most common causes of low TSH. That way you can better understand those situations and hopefully that'll allow you to have a better conversation with your doctor so you can figure out what you need to do next. Once again, my name is Dr. Brad Bodel, and if you're enjoying the information and you wanna learn more about natural ways that you can support your Hashimoto's and hypothyroid symptoms, stick around and make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for new videos every Thursday. I really do appreciate it. So as we just said, most people are familiar with the thyroid pattern where our TSH is elevated. TSH is a hormone that is secreted by our brain and it stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. If our thyroid isn't working for whatever reason and it can't make enough thyroid hormone, then what'll happen is the brain will see this and it will try to compensate or fix the problem by increasing the stimulus of the thyroid. It does that by releasing more TSH and that's why you can see high levels of TSH on your labs when your thyroid isn't working properly. Since an increase in TSH is usually what we see when our thyroid isn't producing enough thyroid hormone, therefore that results in our labs showing low levels of T4 and potentially low levels of T3. Since that T4 and T3 is what drives our metabolism and makes things go in our body, if we don't have those things present, then our metabolism will start to slow down and we'll start to see some of those traditional symptoms that are associated with hypothyroidism. As you might know, depending on who you are as a person and what your health history looks like, this is going to affect people in different ways. But commonly, when our metabolism starts to slow down, that's when we start to see symptoms like weight gain, changes in gut function, whether it be constipation, diarrhea, bloating, or gas, hair loss, brittle nails, dry skin, brain fog, depression, changes in sex hormone function, cold extremities, and more. The thing that makes thyroid problems so tricky is that every cell in our body needs thyroid hormone. And so when our thyroid isn't functioning well, those symptoms can be widespread, diverse, and debilitating. In fact, sometimes there's so many of them, I even forgot to say fatigue and exhaustion and changes in our sleep patterns, which are two things that are very common for people with thyroid problems to experience. But can you also have those low thyroid symptoms and also have low TSH? Well, the answer is yes, but it depends on the situation. So now let's talk about those four most common reasons why you might be having low TSH and also point out which ones can also come with low thyroid symptoms. The first reason why you might have low TSH is an important one because it's also the most dangerous. Graves' disease is an autoimmune condition that causes hyperthyroidism. And what happens is antibodies are made by your immune system that bind to the TSH receptor. When this happens, our thyroid gland thinks that it's getting a message from the brain and the brain is releasing more TSH to stimulate more production of T4 and T3. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. And usually when enough thyroid hormone is made, the brain starts to slow down that TSH production to make sure that things stay stable. In the case of Graves' disease, whenever our immune system flares up, more of those specific antibodies are going to be made and the thyroid gland can be stimulated essentially indefinitely and that can cause way too much thyroid hormone to be made and that can overload the system. Although no one wants to deal with hypothyroid symptoms, hyperthyroid symptoms can be dangerous because if you ramp up your metabolism too much, it can cause your heart to be excessively and irregularly. And the concern, whenever anyone is having an uncontrolled Graves flare-up is that they might have heart failure. In addition to heart problems, people with Graves disease can also experience other symptoms that are associated with an increase in metabolism. Things like a rapid loss of weight, uncontrolled sweating, insomnia, physical shaking, and the feeling of inward trembling, diarrhea, hair loss, and eye bulging. With this increase in symptoms comes a low TSH. Because as we said, our thyroid gland is making way too much thyroid hormone. If our brain is the regulator of the thyroid hormone levels and it sees that we already have too much, 
well, it's going to cut back on TSH as much as possible to try to reduce the production of any more T4. In these scenarios, the TSH isn't just a little bit low, it's flagged as lab low, and it might even say something like alert because the TSH is undetectable by the lab. In addition to low TSH, you'll also see lab high T4, lab high T3, and positive TSI. TSI stands for thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, and those are the antibodies that we talked about that bind with the TSH receptor and make the thyroid gland think that the brain is trying to activate it. This particular marker is specific to Graves, and it's one that is particularly helpful when we're trying to differentiate between Graves disease and a Hashimoto's flare-up. Speaking of which, our second reason why we might have low TSH is because of a Hashimoto's flare-up. In some people, the immune activity can be so aggressive that it can break open thyroid follicles which store thyroid hormone and it can spill them into the bloodstream. Normally thyroid hormone should be released into the bloodstream in a controlled manner. But when you have this sudden breaking of these follicles, we get an excess amount of thyroid hormone released into the bloodstream all at one time. When this happens, it can kind of look like Graves' disease and often gets misdiagnosed as such. And the reason why it looks like Graves' disease is because just like in our Graves' situation, we have too much thyroid hormone in the bloodstream or more than our cells need. The difference with the Hashimoto's flare-up is these situations are transient. And in Graves' disease, that hyperthyroidism is going to be persistent and it's going to get worse. But with Hashimoto's, the temporary increased thyroid activity may last days or weeks, but eventually that hormone will be used up and will revert to more of a hypothyroid state. This can be confusing because some people will ask, well, if I have Hashimoto's, how come I have both hyperthyroid symptoms and hypothyroid symptoms? And that's because in some people, due to the pathophysiology, it can present that way. And yes, in the long run, people are going to experience more of those hypothyroid symptoms. But in the beginning, when the gland is relatively healthy and we're having these dramatic swings in the way that our immune system is functioning, then hyperthyroid situations can also be part of that picture. But even though the long-term outcomes of this are more hypothyroid related, in these temporary situations, we will see a low TSH. Now it's not going to be alert or undetectable like in Graves, and that's another key way that you can tell the two apart, but it will be flagged as low nonetheless. Additionally, Graves' disease almost always has high levels of T4 and T3, but in a Hashimoto's flare-up, those values are typically within the normal range. Whenever we have hyperthyroid symptoms, it can be extra scary, and we need to make sure that we're not dealing with a Graves' situation. However, we also need to make sure to get the diagnosis correct, and so if you're having hyperthyroid symptoms, low TSH, normal T4, and normal T3, and then you have positive TPO and or TG antibodies, which are associated with Hashimoto's, but can also be associated with Graves' disease, make sure you check that TSI, see if it's positive or not. And if it's not, and all the other patterns match more of this Hashimoto's flare-up, that's likely what we're dealing with. Our third most common reason of low TSH is fairly straightforward, and that's too much thyroid medication. Again, as we've been talking about, our brain is always monitoring how much thyroid hormone is available to our cells. If there isn't enough, then it's going to crank up that TSH. And if there's too much, it's going to decrease TSH. Whether that extra thyroid hormone is coming from our thyroid gland or it's coming from the medication that we're taking, well, in either situation, it's going to drive that TSH down. And this is also the main foundation for how doctors manage TSH. If the TSH is elevated above the lab range, then they're going to give you more thyroid medication. But there's also a point where we can go too far and overcorrect. TSH suppression can occur with our standard T4 medications. But due to the fact that T3 is a more active and powerful hormone, Taking a T3 medication alone or taking a combo medication that includes both T4 and T3 can create a more aggressive feedback to the brain. Now, quick note, 
Some doctors don't think that the brain perceives T3, but more recent research tells us that that is not the case. And from clinical experience, that type of medication definitely has a profound effect. So if your TSH is low and you've recently increased your thyroid medication dosage, or you've added T3 to your regimen, all of these could be potential reasons why we're seeing a change in your lab values, and there might be nothing more to it than that. Now, of course, we then need to assess and address this problem appropriately, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So finally, our last reason why you might have low TSH is due to a condition called secondary hypothyroidism. Now, most strategies and approaches to thyroid conditions are all based around primary hypothyroidism. And that means that there's something wrong with the thyroid gland itself. And we assume that all other systems around it are functioning as intended. As you might have guessed, that isn't always the case. And we need to remember that the thyroid gland isn't the one that's thinking, measuring, and checking those thyroid levels. That's the brain's job. Our thyroid is just there to be a good soldier and follow orders. So whatever the brain tells it to do, it does its best to fulfill those wishes. But what if the person who's in charge isn't healthy and isn't functioning properly? Well, that is a possibility and it isn't something that's always considered. So if primary hypothyroidism is due to some sort of problem with our thyroid gland, secondary hypothyroidism is still a situation where we're experiencing hypothyroid symptoms, but the reason for it is secondary to the thyroid gland. And in these scenarios, our thyroid gland isn't being properly stimulated by the brain. Our brain could be struggling for a number of reasons. It could be something like physical damage due to a concussion or surgery, or it could be physiological in nature, like someone who has decreased sex hormone activity, or they have autoimmunity for their neuronal tissue. And even things like chronic stress or chronic sleep deprivation can have severe and significant impacts on our brain health. Well, if our brain isn't healthy, then it's not going to be able to release stimulating hormones like TSH. And if our thyroid gland is just a soldier waiting for orders and it doesn't receive any, then it's not going to make any T4. So even though in these situations we don't see our classic thyroid gland not functioning properly and the increase in TSH, the result is the same. Low levels of thyroid hormone production is going to lead to a low metabolism, and that's going to then generate low thyroid symptoms. These situations can be really tough because you might be having a bunch of hypothyroid symptoms, but because the standard textbook definition of hypothyroidism requires that we have an increase in TSH, most doctors hang on to that so tightly that when they look at your labs, they'll say, well, you can't possibly have low thyroid because your TSH isn't elevated. And this is why it's always important that we look at the bigger picture and we shouldn't just draw one marker to assess the entirety of our thyroid pathway. So what do we do in any of these situations? While it's important for us to look at the TSH and see that it's low, we then wanna ask ourselves, what is causing that TSH to be low? Again, our thyroid health is more complicated than one marker, and different things can cause changes in that TSH. Therefore, we don't wanna recommend a strategy based on the TSH alone. We wanna recommend a strategy based on that driving mechanism. Unfortunately, way too often, I'll see doctors really hone in on that TSH and base every decision they make on the lab value rather than thinking about you as a person. That means if you're already taking medication and your TSH is low, then you can almost guarantee that that doctor is going to back you off that medication even if you're still having hypothyroid symptoms. This can be a huge problem for people who are having Hashimoto's flare-ups or people with secondary hypothyroidism. In the case of the flare-up, that person probably needs some extra thyroid hormone support. And yes, Although in the moment they have too much hormone in their system, that might not be the case a week or a month later. So if you're having a flare up where your TSH is temporarily suppressed and that pattern is something that you've experienced before, then it might be unwise for your doctor to lower your medication and not see you for another three or six months. Sure, 
Maybe some adjustments in your medication are necessary, but the follow-up should be much quicker because your immune system will shift and that will require a different approach. In the case of secondary hypothyroidism, your TSH isn't low because you're making too much, it's low because your brain can't make enough TSH in the first place. Again, if we were to look at TSH by itself and you were someone who was taking thyroid medication, then the first strategy would be to reduce the dose. And in all likelihood, that would only make things worse. On the flip side, some doctors only focus on symptoms. And if you're having hypothyroid-like symptoms, then the answer must be to increase the amount of hormone that you're being provided. Now, if you have Hashimoto's, then you might need some of that support. But in the short term, increasing that dosage could add to the hyperthyroid state and make you feel worse. With secondary hypothyroidism, that might be a scenario where you actually feel a little bit better. If your TSH is low and your T4 is low, then adding some T4 to your system could be helpful. The problem is it will continue to drive down that TSH. And if we don't understand where the problem is coming from in the first place, then we're never going to be able to address it appropriately. And your doctor isn't going to be able to indefinitely increase that thyroid medication because even though it might be helpful in the short term, it's not going to help the brain heal. So if we have low TSH, what's the answer? As always, it's to look at the entire system and identify the underlying cause. Make sure to get a full thyroid panel and don't look at just TSH. If necessary, add antibodies, including TPO, TG, and maybe TSI. While labs are super important, they don't provide as much value if we don't also take a good history. Look at when the symptoms started, what type of symptoms you're having, and how they've evolved over time. All of these will be key indicators to understand what's causing your thyroid symptoms and allow you to have a good conversation with your doctor. That way you guys can take action. But I hope that you liked today's video and I know that it's a little bit of an atypical topic when it comes to Hashimoto's and thyroid lab testing. But again, I hope it was enlightening. And if it's something that you've experienced before, maybe it was helpful in explaining what was going on. Sometimes these things can get a little bit tricky. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, but you know that you need more help, then I'd recommend sending an email to contact at seattlethyroidhelp.com with the word course in the subject line to request more information about signing up for my online course. I always start with a free consultation because I want to be able to talk with you and make sure that the course is going to be a good fit. In the course, my goal is to help women with Hashimoto's who are struggling with chronic fatigue and exhaustion, aren't getting any help from their doctor, and are overwhelmed by trying to do things by themselves. I work to take them from feeling tired, exhausted, and discouraged to making nutrition, lifestyle, and supplement choices with confidence. That way they can better understand their Hashimoto's, start making changes that will actually improve and support their health, and allow them to get their lives back. The course includes over nine years of my experience working with patients who have Hashimoto's, and I've put it into eight actionable modules, all surrounded by a community of people who are experiencing the same challenges, and weekly live question and answer sessions for your support. In the program, I won't be working with everyone because I do want to make sure that it's a good fit for you. So if you are interested, make sure you reach out because enrollment is now live. If you'd rather continue to do some self-learning, make sure you check out some of the other videos and playlists here on my channel. Follow me on Instagram or Facebook for daily information and tips, or you can grab either one of my free downloads, which are listed in the description box below. But that's all for this week. I love you guys. Thank you for the support. Continue to make awesome changes and reach out if there's anything that you need. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But my name is Dr. Rabotel. I hope you have an excellent rest of your week and I will see you in the next one.